crafty friends popping by with a quick tutorial just in time for Halloween. Today I will be showing you how to make a very simple accordion style collar that can be worn as a clown costume or if you make a more elaborate one, something in the Victorian era or a Mary Queen of Scots style costume. You won't need much pair of scissors, some fabric, and I happen to have this on hand, and you probably won't in time for Halloween, but it's crinoline paper. If you wanted to use regular paper, you could. Even a Peltex or a fusible interfacing would work if you wanted to swing by your local Joann fabric. If you want to try your hand with paper, we can give it a go. You'll also need some sort of fastener to clip to the back of your neck, so it could be a snap or a piece of Velcro. Or if you're really in a pinch, just use a safety pin. I'm going to take a quick little measurement of my neck. Now obviously I'd want a little bit of overlap here so that it's comfortable, not too tight. So that's, that's probably about right. Let's see, what is that? So I'm gonna make my neck band 16. My neck band will be 16 inches and the width of it will be probably about one and a half, two inches. And what we're gonna do is when the band is sewn and when we get our long strip of fabric ready with the crinoline paper on the inside, we're going to start folding accordion pleats and we'll stitch the top of the pleat and the bottom of the pleat into the neckband so that it actually just holds and splays out really nicely like this. And to determine how long of a strip of crinoline paper fabric product that you need to make, you can either do the math or you can just make a whole bunch and just start sewing it and when you get towards the end, you finish it off. I will be doubling the width of this paper, so it, my ruffle will be twice as long. It's more dramatic and a little cooler. You can do a small one if you'd like. In order to determine the length of strip that I need, and remember it needs to be covered on both sides, so if you wanna do a contrasting color underneath or on top, just cut two identical strips at the width that you need, really long, and then I will go from there. Because I'm not doing a contrasting color, I am going to allot for one of the sides of seam allowance and make that on the fold. So remove that seam allowance and then fold my piece over. Now I have a very long piece of fabric cut to the length that I need my accordion ruffle to be. As you can see, it's gonna be about this long. And again, I have simply just folded it over, but if you were doing a contrasting color, you would have identical pieces, each with seam allowance allotting for the width of the paper that you're using or the filler that you're using to make it pleat. All right, next up. Before we get sewing, we need to double up this width. It's really easy. Cut a length as long as the fabric that you just made. And then under the sewing machine with this very simple straight stitch, just overlap them and then just run a straight stitch or a zigzag down the center. And that will give you twice as wide. Lastly, before we go to the sewing machine, this is my neck band that I have cut out and it is on the fold. So no need for seam allowance on the top and the seam allowance on the bottom will create about, yeah, one, one and a half-ish with some room for a snap in the back. I have already uh, pre-ironed some uh, fusible to it, so remember to do that if you're working with a fabric like taffetas and satins just to keep it nice and stable. You're going to be anchoring quite a lot onto this, so having that fusible in the back will be super helpful. Yeah.
Now you're at the fun part. I would recommend going over them again with the iron. You wanna make sure it's nice and crisp as much as possible. I like to start on the end that has the hem because it's thicker so it'll hold a little bit more stability when we hand sew it onto the collar. And all you're going to do is start pleating. This is where the joy of the paper comes in because it really holds its pleat shape. Okay, I'll see you on the other side of this. At this point, you should be done with your <laughs> accordion pleats. And you can go in and re-manipulate re them if any of them are super off. Like some of them you can see here are not perfect. However, I am hoping that once we sew all this on, that becomes a little less of an issue. To sew the pleats on, you will need to hand sew. As you can see, what I have here is my neckband set out and all the pleats ready. You can start on one end and just work your way to the other, but what I like to do is push them all together and then mark where my center is and work from one side out. And so all from here, all you'll need to do is stitch the top of each pleat in all the way to either end, and then you'll flip it and do the other side. With a little patience, you are done. So if you're worried about your stitching on this side not looking so great, that's fine. If you want, you can cut out another piece of this type of fabric and fold it over and then just stitch it to kind of hide your, um, your stitching in there. But um, for purposes of this tutorial, we'll just call ourselves done. So let's try it on. Let's see which side we want up. I haven't put in my closures yet, but as you can imagine, it'll look something like this. As you can see, once I closure here, there's a space here that's open. So you can put a snap, a couple snaps here and here to kind of close the circle, or you can just leave it open. Or if you wanted to wear it on the side and you had like a bow or a tie or something, it'd be kind of cool. all your crumbs off. Happy Halloween everyone and remember stay crafty. I'll see you again soon. <laughs>